Whenever you build user interfaces with the VCL, you need input from your users. Tedit is the standard component that comes with Delphi and is part of the VCL since Delphi 1. There hasn't been a change to this. However, with T Advanced Edit, your life will get a lot easier. Because T Advanced Edit has features that not only makes building user interfaces easier for you, but also makes entering values and data for your users much easier. Let's start by looking at the features. First of all, data entry is possible in the following formats. You can enter string, which is the default behavior of tedit, but you can also edit numeric values, be it float values or integer values, positive values, negative values. You can enter passwords, meaning you don't see what you type. This behavior is also possible with tedit using a password character, but tadvanced edit makes it even easier. You can even enter monetary values, meaning you have a currency symbol, you have a thousand value separator, you have a decimal point, all that is being taken care of by the component. Furthermore, you can enter a range of values or a list of values. Then hexadecimal input is possible. And if that isn't enough for you, you can define custom masks like T mask edit. Furthermore, so that your users don't have to enter the same data over and over again, you can implement data lookup. So for example, if you have a list of car brands like Audi, BMW, and as soon as the user types A, the auto completion offers Audi. Then the user has the option to press enter to complete with Audi or to keep on typing to go to a different brand. Furthermore, you can define different display values and data values that are being shown as soon as the lookup is completed. Furthermore, the component is URL aware, meaning if you have a URL inside of the edit control, the user can click the URL and navigate it in a web browser. The control also comes with an attached label, so you don't need T-labeled edit anymore. This edit control automatically gives you the option to put a label on top, bottom, left, and right as you use from T-labeled edit. Prefixes and suffixes are also possible. So if you work with units like temperature units, you can define them as a suffix and they're part of your mask that the value is being entered. You can also forget about implementing Windows messages yourself. Clipboard support and OLE events are included. You can also persist the data in the registry or in INI files. And last but not least, you can also implement data validation, meaning you implement an event that validates the data and if there are any errors in the data, the edit control offers means so you can mark these errors and you can display them in red color, for example. As we all know, PowerPoint presentations are nice, but let's have a look at Delphi and the component itself. So advanced edit is the component. And if you have other components from TMS, be sure that you pick the advanced edit. And here you see you also have the advanced edit in a database version, meaning if you have data in a database and you want to use the um, data source, you can use TDB advanced edit just like you're used to using T advanced edit. Furthermore, there's another version of the edit control that offers a button in the right or left corner for additional user interaction. We're just gonna look at the standard advanced edit first though. This very much looks like a T-edit control. However, there's big differences when it comes to properties. So let's have a look at the properties of this control. Please be aware that I only mention properties. There are additional properties compared to T-edit. However, before we look at the properties that are visible in the object inspector, Let's look at the obvious ones that you need when programming with this edit control. So let's drop a button and implement the onClick event and have a look at what advanced edit has to offer. So normally in order to get values from an edit control, you use the text property, right? Text property is always a string and this is the biggest advantage of using advanced edit as a developer or as a programmer. Because here, normally you would have to convert your string value to a numerical value, and at that point, you would have to do some kind of validation, you had to make sure that it's a decimal point or a comma in Germany. So all sorts of errors could show up. So you're not done as quickly. So you have a lot of work to do. Well, with this control, you don't have to do a lot of work because you have, for example, 
the property int value which delivers an integer. All the error handling is done by the control itself because you can make sure that only numerical values are being entered. So you as the developer don't have to take care of the fact if there is any like characters in there that are not part of an integer value. Furthermore, you also have float value for float values. So that is the biggest thing for you as a developer, if you ask me. But how can you influence the user experience for the user that uses your application? In order to improve the user experience for your end users, you use the properties that are visible in the object inspector. Of course, the obvious property candidates are there and I'm not going to mention them. You can change the font, you can change the background color, you can change the frame color of the edit control that is all customizable. I am looking more like things, for example, entering temperature values. If you wanted to make an edit control to enter a temperature in Fahrenheit. So right now, this application would work as follows. There's no difference to a regular edit control. So for example, if I were to ask for a temperature like 80 degrees Fahrenheit, that's a valid temperature, right? However, I could also enter this, and this is not a valid temperature in Fahrenheit. So let's have a look how we can do this with T advanced edit in an easier and more comfortable way. Of course, our main interest is that the user is unable to enter anything that's illegal, right? So you could think about masks, you can think about all these kind of other things that the VCL offers by default. However, this control offers you standard predefined types for data entry. So what you need to do is you go to the edit type and right now you see it's ET string, which limits it to nothing. You can enter anything. So here you enter, for example, as we're only interested in an integer temperature, the type would be ET numeric. If you would be interested in temperatures with decimals, you would pick ET float, so ET numeric. And you see that it immediately switches over to zero because that's the default value for nothing being entered, right? And to make it more comfortable for the user, you can also enter an empty text that is being displayed as a prompt that please user enter something. And the property is really called empty text. So empty text, please enter temperature. So as soon as you start the application, you would expect, hey, we don't have any values entered, but hey, there's zero. Okay, zero is valid data to be entered, right? So if we take it away, it switches to zero again. So how do we get an empty text with a numerical value? Well, it is just a thing. You need to have a low numeric null value, meaning you have to allow explicitly for the component to be empty for numerical values. For string values, that's not a problem because if there is no string in there, the string is empty and you can check for it. But for numerical values, you need to activate a low numeric null value. Otherwise, there's always going to be a zero in there. So as soon as you then take the text away, you see that we get the null text or the empty text. So as soon as we switch over to allow numeric null value to false and keep this empty, it switches over to zero right away. So be aware in order for numerical values to show the empty text, you have to allow actually the edit being empty. And that means you have to allow numeric null values. Just as an aside, because we get many inquiries, I specified an empty text, but it's not showing. So that's the reason why it might not be showing. Of course, you can define the style of the empty text, which color, if it's bold or not, that's all possible. So we are halfway there, right? We cannot enter, I'm typing, nothing's happening. But as soon as I enter a valid integer value, everything's working as expected. However, it would be nice if I actually told the user what to enter. So what we can do is we have the label property. So we can say label caption temperature. And now you see that it's to the left. We don't want it on the left. We can specify the label position and we can say top left, for example. You can also make the label transparent, but that's all eye candy. The margin of the label is pretty important because if you 
increase this, the distance to the edit control changes. We set it back to 4, which is a standard value. Of course, you can also specify a length limit for your edit control with numerical values that doesn't make so much sense, but you can also specify a max value and a min value that makes much more sense. So we're looking for a temperature value between 110 and 32. We don't want any, if you compare it to Celsius, negative temperatures. So we don't want any temperatures below 32. Let's see if that works. Let's enter a temperature um, that is higher, for example 120, it immediately is being reduced to 110 and 20 immediately goes up to 32. So you see we're not able to enter anything that is incorrect. So we'll always end up with valid data. So our application can always use the int value property and we can always be certain that the application won't throw an exception because the data is formatted correctly. Still, there is room for improvement. We can add a suffix. A suffix is something that you add on the right side, at least in American and European um, languages. Of course, there's languages that go from right to left. Then it's the other way around, of course, but the suffix in the English language or the German language is always on the right. So if, for example, you want the unit Fahrenheit, you set the suffix to F of Fahrenheit and that's that. So now if you start it you get like a unit attached to it and if you want to make it a little bit better looking you add a space in front of that and it looks really nice now. 80 degrees Fahrenheit, 100 degrees Fahrenheit. So the user immediately know what is expected to be entered and the user experience is so much better and you also take away the risk that the user enters something that's not supposed to be entered. Let's also allow temperatures with a decimal point in them. So we simply change the type from ET numeric to ET float. You see the standard is two decimal points which is a little bit of overkill for a temperature. So how can we change this to one number after the decimal point? For that we can find the precision property. Precision is currently set to 2, we set it to 1 and we see we end up with one decimal point. Everything else stays the same, so the default temperature is strangely enough now 0, 0.0, so min value and max value is no longer paid attention to. What is that you might ask? Well, so this is yet another thing how complex this component is. You have different properties with regard to maximum and minimum for the data type that is being entered. As you can see here, you have max value, min value, but you also have min float value and max float value. So the max float value is also 110 and the min float value is 32 again. So you see, this is necessary, of course, because you could have a min float value of 31.5 and you couldn't enter that for the min value because that one is of type integer and this one is supposedly of type double. So if we start the application again now, we should have, as you can see there, a minimum temperature of 31.5. We can't enter 200 Fahrenheit it goes to the maximum of 110.0. So you've seen how comfortable you can enter numerical values. However, there's one more thing that's really, really comfortable. Let's say you ask the user about his or her favorite baseball team. Of course, you can simply use advanced edit, drop the component, draw it nicely, and then you change the data type to ET alphanumeric, and the user would be able to enter any team name. If it's a certain league, of course, you can use a simple combo box, but then you would limit the values that are supposedly being entered, right? So let's say you're in the United States and you ask about the favorite sports team. Obviously, a person from the United States would enter something completely different than a person from Europe. So it would be nice if you could enter some 
default values or sound suggestions, but you still don't want to limit your users to a certain amount of values, right? So let's say you enter all the baseball teams, football teams of the United States, but still your favorite team could be Borussia Dortmund from Germany, which is a soccer team. So how would you do that? Well, you can do it in code or you also have design time support with the lookup property. The lookup property, which has several sub properties, allows you to customize the autocomplete, as I refer to it by now, functionality of the edit control. So if you use the display list, there you enter all the names that you want to offer for auto completion. So this way we could insert the teams from the AL East, click OK, run the application, and what happens if we enter these values? Nothing. Why? Because in addition to simply providing the values, you also have to enable the lookup. So let's start this again. B, O, and as soon as you type the second letter, you get the Boston Red Sox, the New York Yankees, the Baltimore Orioles, or the Toronto Blue Jays. But you can also enter Borussia Dortmund if you want to. Just be certain if you want to enter this way that you have to switch back from alphanumeric to a string because alphanumeric only allows you to enter letters and numbers. Space is neither a letter nor a number. So in order to enter Borussia Dortmund you need to define it as a string again of data type ET string. So this lookup option really gives you the means to define a certain amount of values to make it easier. This list can even be loaded from a file or from a web service, or it can be based on recent data that has been entered. So your options are manifold. One important feature I would like to mention though, that is often forgotten. For example, you cannot only define a display list, you can also define a so-called value list. The difference between the two is the display list is used while you type and if you select an entry from that list the value list is being used. So for example let's say the display list is still the very verbose list but all of these teams have like a abbreviated three letter denotation. So if you wanted to use that let's do it like this. We copy the list again we go to the value list and I insert them. The Baltimore Orioles are abbreviated as BAL, Boston is BOSS, New York Yankees is NYY, the Tampa Bay Rays I, I usually abbreviate it just with TB, and the Toronto Blue Jays I usually TOR for Toronto. That's it. Let's run this again. So we enter the Boston Red Sox, we select it, and we get the short form, we don't get the long form. If you type New York Yankees, you see it's already saying New York, but still, as soon as we select it, it becomes NYY. Still, we're able to enter Borussia Dortmund. So this gives you a means to define a certain amount of values, replace them with a standard set of values that you want to use, but it also offers the user the option to enter something totally different. So that's it for the first part of T-Advanced Edit. The next part will show you how you can use error markings.